Welcome to stage three of the resolution game. In today's tutorial, you are going to learn how to master the knack. What is the knack? Well, both you and I are psychologically locked into our characteristic traits and habits by a process known as neuroassociative conditioning, or the knack for short and ease of remembrance. The knack is when the mind-body has been conditioned with a pain to pleasure stimulus response to avoid pain and discomfort in order to seek out pleasure and comfort, whereby you are associating pain or pleasure to some type of stimulus, which means that your psyche is wired to be triggered by specific stimulus that causes you to move away from pain and towards pleasure. So how does this come to be? Well, the knack is an unconscious conditioning, which means you are not aware that you are being triggered to do something when confronted with the prospect of pain or pleasure. Demonstrating the power of the knack was done by an infamous experiment that was performed by Russian physiologist Ivan Pavlov, who, during his 1980s research into dog salivation, discovered how dogs were conditioned to respond to pleasure. Pavlov affirmed that his subject dogs were triggered to start salivating as their food was placed directly in front of them. And during those experiments, Pavlov also noticed that the dogs would salivate just by hearing the footsteps of his assistant walking towards the room with the dog food. Pavlov soon discovered that any cue or stimulus that the dogs had learned to associate to the pleasure of food would trigger the response to salivate. By the repetition of associating an expectant pleasure to the cues and stimulus of food, the dog's psychoneurological apparatus became wired to automatically experience intense desire and motivation to eat, where any cue would trigger the desire. Eventually, Pavlov trained the dogs to respond to just the ring of a bell, where the dogs would come running to his room and salivating in search of that rewarding food. We too are wired to be triggered by certain stimulus and cues in our environment that are linked to the pains and pleasures of our habits and characteristic traits. For example, isn't it true that when you see an advertisement of your favorite food or you smell something nice whiff out from the kitchen, or friend describes to you how they had this fabulous meal at the restaurant that you like, that it triggers this intense desire for you to want that experience too. And you may even salivate at the prospect. In fact, the knack is so powerful that the mind only has to think of a favorite type of food and you start craving it. Right now, if you take a moment out from this video, pause the video and recall a vivid memory of the last time that you indulged with your favorite food or drink, and this will certainly trigger the emotional desire for it. You may even get the compulsive urge to take action towards that desire. That's because our most powerful memories are encoded with intense emotions and desires. We are also triggered by the knack of pain. Whenever we perceive or think of a situation from the past or present that we have associated pain towards, then this can trigger the conditioned response of experiencing an underlying fear, loss, trauma, insecurity, or misery, etc., that then triggers a reaction to behave a certain way. Each time that you have avoided pain or indulged with pleasure, the heightened sensation and emotions of that experience were imprinted onto and deeply internalized by the psychoneurological fabric of your mind body, which means that every image, thought, 
feeling, sensation, and including the details of the experience, i.e. the location, the people, event, and timing, etc., which took place before and after the experience, have been recorded by the mind-body, played out over a lifetime from childhood to adulthood, and through decades of repetition, our mind-body has become so deeply anchored with pain and pleasure associations to certain stimulus and cues. They have become autonomous and involuntary reactions, which means that our usual habits and characteristic traits are unconsciously conditioned within the psyche as powerful mental programs that dominate and control the way we behave. We are continually experiencing strong impulses, feelings, and thoughts that directs who we be and what we do, which makes it extremely difficult to break through those old habits. Even with the sincerest of intentions and most compelling motivation to make behavioral changes, it is the knack of our old habitual self with its conditioned responses to avoid pain and seek pleasure that will sabotage all the attempts that we make. Human behavior is driven by the innate desire to avoid pain and seek pleasure. The knack process is nature's way of helping us to record and therefore easily recall painful and pleasurable experiences so that we are prepared and know what to do in future situations where it's beneficial to repeat the experience. The innate drive to avoid pain and seek pleasure is why we build shelter for comfort and protection away from the harsh elements. Why we've established communities and trade lines to ease the hardships of labor and supply. Why we enjoy the benefits of social interaction. Why procreation takes place because obviously we are aroused by the impleasurable enjoyment of sex. Evolved over a millennia, these primal desires to move away from pain and move towards pleasure have become encoded within our DNA as a prominent part of our human psychology. These innate desires are part of every decision that we make. Both consciously and unconsciously, we are always considering the factors of what we desire and then making a choice based upon the underlying question of, will this lead to pain or bring me pleasure? Sadly, our innate desires to avoid pain and seek out pleasure have become inverted and perverted by modern day society. Today we live in a brave new world that promotes unhealthy and extreme associations to pain and pleasure. Society has been structured and organized in a way that our desires to avoid pain and seek pleasure are continually being manipulated by mass marketers and brand owners that use tantalizing images and alluring slogans and words, which are cues and stimulus, that they know will trigger a conditioned response from us to buy their products. Because we love to indulge, we are easily triggered. Pleasure especially is so easy, cheap and convenient to obtain. On a daily basis, wherever you go and whatever you do, there will always be some type of advertisement that tempts and triggers you towards pleasure. Every street corner has a flashy neon light that promises a quick fix delight. Whether it be coffee, chocolate, cream cakes, crisps, cigarettes, cognac, and nowadays even cannabis, whatever it is that floats your boat and soothes your gut, it is readily available to service your every fleeting whim. Of course, because of the extreme ways in which we live, either doing too much or too little, we are looking for that little pleasurable and uplifting buzz, that fatigue delay or stress buster 
or that well-deserved reward that we think makes life worth living for. But the pleasure effect itself is so fleeting that pleasure always begets more pleasure. We have a little bit and then instantly want a little bit more, now or sometime soon later. In fact, we become so conditioned and deeply hypnotized to seek out our favorite types of pleasures that we become signage hunters that are desperately looking out for that one brand, that one symbol, that signals, that one thing that we especially like. And like Pavlos dogs, when the bell is a ringing, we come a running. And interestingly though, we are both Pavlov and the dog. We are ringing and running to our own bells by playing the mind association games which are linked to pain and pleasure. Psychologically, we use painful circumstances and emotions to justify our desires for pleasure. We do this by playing mind association games that say, when this painful thing happens, I will reward myself with this comforting pleasure. This pain could be a stressful work task, exercise, workout, dispute with someone, not getting the thing that we desire. There are so many ways that we link an expectant pleasure to a perceived pain. I now want you to notice how just before or after that you've experienced some type of pain in your life, that you will use sympathetic language to justify the preceding pleasure that's on the horizon. Like, I've worked really hard, I deserve this, or I feel so bad right now, but this will make me feel better, and, and why not? Everybody else does the same, or I just can't get through this without that, or I need this to feel good. We all have our little sayings that have become our little excuses. The sympathetic language that we use excuses us from the guilt of indulgence, excuses us from the weakness of giving in to temptation, excuses us from taking blame for our actions, excuses us from having to deal with reality, excuses us from the discipline of being good. Once we have made excuses for our behavior, we then start to rationalize why we are warranted in our choices. Each time you do excuse and rationalize your behavior, you endorse your behavior. You are affirming to yourself that something is needed, necessary, and acceptable. What you continually endorse, you then reinforce as a normalized part of your life. What becomes Normal then becomes abnormal and uncomfortable to not do. The moving from pain and towards pleasure association is so powerful and prevalent in everything that you do. Each time that you communicate to yourself and others about the hardships, unfairness and discomforts of your life, and you're reeling off those negative thoughts and self-talk, you are triggering off the linked association that you have to some type of future pleasure and reward, where the unconscious mind-body has been conditioned to know and expect that pleasure will soon arrive after the pain. It's just a matter of when and where. Perversely, this conditioning is so powerful that you will unconsciously start to instigate and lean into painful situations and emotions. With unconscious intent, you will start to manifest in your life pain-inducing circumstances that will lead you back to your pleasures and comforts. This could be unconsciously creating problems and dramas in your relationships, at work, and during certain activities and events, where you eagerly participate in or be the cause of painful circumstances that will justify the pleasurable escapism that will follow next. It is this aberrant pain to pleasure process that encapsulates the psychology of addiction 
and it can get quite sadistic. On a subconscious level, you know that pain will lead to your pleasure. And so you can start to take great pleasure in your pains. For example, it is the obese person that gets angry for being overweight and unable to resist junk food. And so this person beats themselves up with negative self-talk but they perversely enjoy getting angry about their weight problems because the emotional pain is simultaneously arousing the strong desire and urge for more of that delicious junk food in which to feel comforted. Another example would be the so-called workaholic that chases after the achievement and accumulation of wealth. They actually revel under the extreme pressure and psycho stress because it's linked to the huge financial and material reward. Even though the extreme work is triggering powerful stress hormones that degrades their mind body, even though and without realizing it, the workaholic is conditioning their mind body to always be busy with stressful work activities and therefore they are unable to stop and enjoy their financial and material rewards. Whilst your current pain to pleasure associations remain intact, you can never change your ways, you can never break your habits, you can never make vital self-improvements nor rise above your current circumstances to improve your lifestyle conditions. Whilst you have some type of pleasurable comfort or value that is rewarding you for staying as you are, you will stay as you are. Whilst you continue to associate some type of pleasurable comfort, reward or value to your painful life experiences, those pains will remain present in your life. You therefore need to learn how to utilize the knack process to break through your bad habits, those negative emotions or limiting life conditions and detrimental characteristic traits by reconditioning the way that you associate with pain and pleasure to those aspects of your life. You can actually reprogram your mind body so that pain becomes a driving force away from the things that you don't want, and so that pleasure becomes a pulling force towards the things that you do want. So here is where I want to talk about making pain your ally. Of the two greatest forces that influence human behavior, pain is the greatest motivator. Humans will do anything to move away from pain. Perceived pain can either be a blocking force or a driving force to change. This means that when we perceive there will be a pain as the consequence of taking action, we naturally move backwards away from the pain. When pain is perceived to be a consequence of not taking action, we then move forward away from the pain. Unfortunately, most people are associating with pain as a blocking force towards the things that they want. You see, when attempting behavioral and lifestyle changes, we often associate pain as a blocking force to the change itself. We associate pain to losing out on the current pleasures, comforts, securities, and even the status that's currently being enjoyed. We can also associate pain to the difficulties of the transformation process itself. And it is only when the pain of staying as is has become far greater than the pains of change itself that then we are motivated to make the change. Pain is the perfect ally when utilized as a driving force towards beneficial outcomes. If you were to familiarize yourself with the backstories of the greatest people in society that have achieved some of the most amazing feats, you will come to know that they persevered to success because they utilized pain as a driving force towards success. 
You will be inspired by people who've overcome monumental obstacles. You will see pathways littered with misfortunes and setbacks. You will see people that excel despite the odds, the fears, and the self-doubts. For those who do succeed, the pains of not reaching their ambitions are far greater than the pains that they endured to achieve them. Professional sports stars are the exemplars of utilizing pain as a driving force, and they've definitely got the knack for making beneficial changes. If we were to take an MMA fighter, a mixed martial arts fighter, for instance, they endure these grueling training regimes and punish their body on a daily basis with immense physical exertion and whilst plagued with injuries. And not only do they go through hell to achieve peak condition ready for competition, during the actual fights they also take violent and life-threatening blows to the body. The violence that MMA fighters endure is so aggressive, it inflicts massive trauma to their bones, tissue and organs, which usually results in them excreting blood in the urine for days after. It is the knack process which makes it possible for these trained fighters to continually absorb high degrees of pain and still progress forward. Through years of dedicated training, the MMA fighters condition their mind-body with a high pain threshold and tolerance to a point that they can handle a great deal of psychological and physical stress and discomfort. They do this by associating immense pain to the idea of losing a fight. They associate pain-inducing faults to losing out on rank, earnings, title, endorsements, stature, respect, and not being able to support their lifestyle outside of the ring. Whilst ultimately, for these MMA fighters, the perceived failure of not being a world champion far exceeds the torture that they are willing to endure for its achievement. It really is this simple. What the mind perceives, the body will achieve, period. The mind over matter principle is so powerful that perceived pain can even override actual physical pain. Perceived pain takes effect just by thinking that something will be so painful that this elicits a powerful emotional charge that radically shifts your relationship with that experience. Perceived pain will shift the emotional needle. For example, every warm-blooded parent will attest that to envisage, just envisage the scary scenario of your own child dying will elicit a perceived pain that is so intense that you will feel a terrifying horror that sends a cold shiver down your spine. The kind of emotional charge that causes you to be more appreciative, attentive, cautious and loving with your loved one. Psychological pain can actually be more painful than physical pain. People that self-harm by scratching and wounding their body, they do so because the physical pain alleviates the far worse torture of psychological pain. With the knack process, you can enlist the skill of perceived pain to change the detrimental behaviors of the archetypes. When envisaging with such emotional intensity the negative consequences that you will incur if you continue with the detriments of an archetype, I guarantee that you will do whatever it takes to prevent that painful scenario from playing out. If you then associate the pulling force of a future beneficial outcome to not carrying out the detrimental impact of an archetype, then you will have double the motivation to evolve. 
Knowingly and unknowingly, you do utilize the knack on a regular basis to avoid pains and obtain pleasures. Now take a moment to think of a change that you would like to implement, but you keep delaying it. Where the idea of change has been playing on your mind for some time now, but you just haven't found the right time to make it happen. The reason that you delay taking action with this change is because you've stacked a heap of painful reasons to the change itself. Right now, take a moment and identify those painful reasons. What are the factors that stop you from taking action? Where do you feel uncertain or fearful about the process and the outcome? What doubts do you have over your ability to implement this change? Do you have a fear of rejection, ridicule, criticization, judgment, or failure? By making the change, what type of value, comfort, pleasure, status, or relationship even do you stand to lose? Also, change does not occur when it lacks emotional charge. Faults without emotion will not motivate change. And we all have faults about the things that we would like to be, have, and do. And yet, without emotional charge, those faults, they just gather dust. That's because emotions are the juice, the jazz, the rocket fuel, the intention, the must that charges us forward with action. And so what makes the difference between emotional charge or none? Emotional charge is not present when change lacks priority, significance, and urgency. The emotional charge is present when the change has priority, significance, and urgency. And it is you. You are the one that decides what is a priority, significant, and urgent in your life according to your guiding values and beliefs. Your guiding values and beliefs are what you absolutely must have in order to avoid pain and achieve pleasure. What now follows is a four-step process that teaches you how to utilize the power of knack to make fundamental changes to your life and to the conditioning of your psyche as it relates to the archetypes that you've identified in stages two and three, and as it relates to the archetypes that you have already identified, so that you can rewire their pain to pleasure associations so that they no longer trigger you with traits and habits that are self-abusive and self-sabotaging. Once you do master the knack and start utilizing the associative process to make breakthrough changes, you will become unstoppable. You will be able to use this skill to make massive changes in any area of your life. We begin with the first step, which is to identify a power asset. What now follows is an exercise to identify a personal experience that you have utilized the knack to harness emotional charge towards a beneficial outcome that was an absolute must for you. This will become your power asset, this memory recall that proves, inspires, and motivates you to utilize the knack effectively. Right now, take a moment out from this video to recall a key moment from your past where you achieved this monumental, life-changing breakthrough. Choose that one breakthrough change that instantly shifted you sideways and shook your world forever. Maybe it was the time that you met a very special person that you couldn't live without. It could be that you achieved this unbelievable feat that you previously thought was impossible, and yet you made it happen anyway. Perhaps it was a moment that you received a prestigious award or qualification or completed a tough 
competition. Possibly it was a time that you relocated to another family home. Whatever it is, think of that moment from the past, that event where you made a transformational breakthrough change. Then write down a brief description of that breakthrough change. Now I want you to explore at least 10 reasons why this change was an absolute must for you. Recall the emotional pains which were the driving forces and recall the pleasures which were the pulling forces that motivated that change for you. Did you perhaps imagine the painful consequences of not breaking through to achieve the outcome? Did the thought of remaining in the same place elicit some type of suffering? Did you feel deeply unsatisfied or extremely bored with the circumstances back then? Was the outcome that you wanted so desirable that you have prepared to move mountains to make it happen? What was the perceived reward for making the change? In what ways did you envisage that your life would radically improve. Now, write down those reasons for your breakthrough change. This breakthrough change example with those reasons will now become your power asset for change. Every time that you recall this memory, it will become your inspiration for change. Every time you elicit the peak emotional state of that memory, you can then direct its emotional charge by association towards a new breakthrough change. Now for the second step where you will identify pain pleasure associations. Because how you associate with pain and pleasure to the different aspects of your life will determine if you are experiencing regressive or progressive results in these different areas. And if you want to break free from limiting habits and detrimental traits that are causing negative consequences in your life, then you need to master how to rewire those conditions within that lead to those consequences without, whereby you reverse the pain-pleasure association that you have to those external stimulus cues and triggers. So from this point onwards, you will learn how to use the knack to reverse associate the detrimental consequences of the archetypal traits. From the self-explorative work that you have done with the Devious Dozen, you have already identified their behavioral patterns and triggers. You already have the self-knowledge of where you can change the current pain to pleasure associations of each archetype, so that they no longer trigger you towards a negative consequence. And from that self-knowledge, from that journaling work that you have done with the archetypes, you can discover three things. You need to first discover how you associate a perceived pleasure, which is the pulling force, to satisfy the desires of an archetypal trait. You need to also discover how you associate a perceived pain, which is the driving force, that triggers its behavioral patterns towards pleasure. You also need to discover how you associate a perceived pain, which is the blocking force, to not obtaining its desired outcome. And you can do this working with one archetype at a time. You can explore and identify the archetype's current pain to pleasure associations. So grab your journal and inside your journal, I want you to write the working title, the knack of name of first archetype. Now review your self-explorative journaling work on the first archetype that was on your priority list. Decide what behaviors of this archetype that you would like to recondition so that they no longer have a detrimental impact on your life. And right now, the following three questions will guide you to establish the knack process that keeps you habituated to the detrimental patterns of this archetype. And I want you to give at least six answers to each of the following questions.
So the first question is, what are the pleasurable rewards, beneficial values and positive emotions that I obtain from acting out the desires of this archetypal trait and why is this important and necessary for me? So here, with this question, you want to establish at least six pleasurable motives that keeps this part of you habituated to its detrimental outcomes. So what is it that's actually making you feel good about being this archetype? What are you getting from this behavior? What keeps you coming back for more of the action? And with the explorative work that you've done so far in your journal, connected to this archetype, it should be very easy for you to establish those reasons. Moving on to the second question, what painful circumstances, people and experiences, which are the driving forces, does this archetypal trait help you to avoid, escape and alleviate from, and why is this important and necessary for you? So here, with this question, I want you to identify with at least six pain-induced motives that trigger the behavior of this archetype. So what is making you feel bad? What is it that's intolerable and uncomfortable that's triggering this part of you? And again, with the explorative work that you've already done so far in your journal connected to this archetype, it should be easy for you to establish the reasons. Which leads us on to the third question. What do I fear I will lose out on keeping and these are the blocking forces, by not acting out the desires of this trait, why and how does that perceived pain motivate me? So with this question, you are perceiving that there will be some type of pain if you do not continue with the habitual traits of this archetype. And it's this perceived pain of not getting what you desire that actually blocks you from making change. Because obviously, by giving up a pleasure, there is going to be this initial pain of going without the thing that brings you pleasure. This will be the withdrawal pains of not being soothed, pleasured, and rewarded. So think of the existing values, comforts, pleasures, and securities, i.e. the possessions, relationships, social status, financial positions, the freedoms, etc., that you may lose out on by not maintaining the behavior of this archetype. So there you have it. Those three questions will assist you to identify with the current pain to pleasure associations that, that keeps the habitual traits of this archetype triggered and active. Do give those questions due diligence review and revise your answers until you have clearly identified the motivational forces of this one archetypal trait. The unveiling of its pain to pleasure associations will empower you with increased self-knowledge. Then you are ready for the third step, which is the reverse association. The purpose of this third step is to reverse associate the knack process of this archetype's negative traits so that you deactivate its stimulus response to triggers and cues. To do this, you will collate a stack of pain to pleasure associations that give you profound reasons to not follow through with the actions of this archetype that lead to detrimental consequences. What now follows are two powerful questions that require great contemplation. These questions will give you the reasons, the reverse associations that rewire the driving and pulling forces of this archetype. It may take you a day or more to answer these questions. Take however long it takes. You want accuracy with your answers, not immediacy. So, I want you to provide at least five detailed reasons to each of the following questions. The first question is a question that elicits 
pain association reasons. The question is, how does the life of me and the people I love suffer immensely in the spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, social, and financial realms over the next one, five, and 20 years time if the detrimental consequences of this archetype continues? What do we all stand to lose and why is this totally unacceptable? So here with this question, you are associating massive pain, which is a perceived pain, a pain which could happen in the future if you don't stop the detrimental traits of this archetype. By answering this question, use your imagination and project yourself in to the future to imagine potential scenarios where you are experiencing painful outcomes as a result of continuing with the traits of this archetype. Imagine the hurts, the losses, the shames, the regrets that everyone would experience and how the situation gets worse as the years go on. The second question is a question that elicits pleasure association reasons. Here you are asking, in what profound ways will the future improve mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, socially, and financially for both me and my loved ones over the next one, five, and 20 years time once this archetype no longer has a detrimental impact on my life? And what rewards do we stand to gain and why is it crucial that this happens? So here, again, you want to project yourself into the future and imagine all of the beneficial gains, rewards, and achievements that both you and your loved ones will receive as a result of you overcoming the detrimental traits of this archetype. You really want to revel in the imagination of how good things will get and be and come up with at least five different powerful scenarios and reasons that will become the motivational forces that pull you towards that imagined outcome. Which now brings us both to the fourth step of the knack technique, which is reconditioning the mind-body. So now that you have compiled 10 legitimate reasons why it is an absolute must for you to reverse the negative traits of this archetype, they can now be used to rewire the knack of its psychology. For the knack process to work successfully, you must now accompany those reasons with emotional charge. So how do you elicit emotional charge? Well, when you envisage a scenario with such clarity and intensity, it will elicit an emotional charge. It is the combination of vivid imagery and intense emotions that actually creates memories. In the previous exercise, you will have noticed that the two association questions gave you future-based reasons for change. When you envisage those future scenarios with vivid imagery and intense emotions, you will create what I refer to as a future memory. The future memory is the internalized image and emotional signature of a perceived future event. With the NAC process, inside the mind's eye, you can associate the future memory to the current recorded memory of the archetypal trait, and in doing so, this creates an associative link that will deactivate its stimulus response whenever you feel triggered to repeat its behavior. This deactivation occurs because when this archetype is triggered in its usual way, this subsequently triggers the linked future memory with its blocking force, which is the pain association that cancels out the emotional charge of the perceived desire. 
You are rewiring this part of you to envisage that there will be intense pain that will follow if you go ahead with its desire. The knack process is the ultimate mind over matter technique just by utilizing the power of imagination and emotional charge alone you can change the biophysiological apparatus of the body. What follows now is the NAC five-step reconditioning process. In the first part of the reconditioning process, I want you to recall your memory power asset. This will prime your mind-body with a peak emotional state. This energy priming can then be transferred into the following steps. The second step would be now to internalize the five pain association reasons. Do this process with one reason at a time. Read the reason out loud or within your mind, then with eyes open or shut, whatever's comfortable for you, use your mind's eye to envisage that time in the future where the painful consequences of being that archetype have already occurred exactly as you described them. Experience the experience as though it were real. When you envisage the scenario, notice what you can see, hear, and feel. Imagine the immense suffering that occurs because this part of you did not change. Really feel it deep in your heart and soul, within the mind's eye. Now travel further into the future, say 20 years from now. What has happened to you and your loved ones within that time because this part of you did not change? I want you to notice how worse things have got. I want you to feel how much less energy that you have. I want you to notice how your physical appearance is tired and old, that you are feeling miserable, bitter and resentment because now it's too late to change. I really want you to feel the weight of a heavy heart and broken spirit because you did not change the ways of this archetype. I really want you to notice in the mind's eye how everything has got far worse over time. The next step, I want you to internalize the five pleasure association reasons. And again, do this one answer at a time. Read the reason out loud or inside your mind with the eyes open or shut, using your mind's eye to envisage and travel to that time in the future where the rewarding outcomes have already taken place exactly as you described. Notice what you can see, hear and feel. Experience the immense fulfillment and joy that occurs because this part of you did change. Really feel it deep in your heart and soul. Now inside your mind's eye, travel 20 years into the future and notice how much more energetic you are. Look at how your physical appearance is younger, slimmer, vibrant and fresh. Feel how much happier, joyful and livelier you feel. Notice how your entire life has become so much better over time for you and your loved ones. Moving on to the next step is where you will do future proofing. Now I want you to imagine a time in the future where this archetype has been triggered by a typical stimulus. Go to that future place in your mind's eye. Arrive at the scenario where you've just been triggered and you can see and feel yourself being aroused in the usual way towards the usual outcome. Then, Quickly swap this image inside your mind's eye with the opposing force of the future memory that you've created. Notice how the new response deactivates the trigger. With future proofing, the method is to use your mind's eye to stitch the future memory to the start of the current memory to create an alternative ending that breaks the original pattern. Now I want you to repeat steps one to four until you have reverse associated all the reasons collated from the previous exercise. And that is the mind over matter process using your mind's eye to recondition the pain to pleasure association of this archetype.
And look, if you got instant results from using the NAC, then more power to you. For everyone else, very rarely do we pick up new techniques first go. This means that you may struggle with this technique to begin with. If you do find the process difficult, please do not feel discouraged. If the effect is not immediate, please do not get disheartened. Learning a new skill does require a transition from the ineffective action to the effective skill. For the knack to become a powerful skill that always gets the intended result, you must undergo its practice with patience and perseverance. There is no getting away from it. Consistent repetition produces skill. So watch this tutorial two or three times or more until the information sinks in, until you get that realization that, aha, now I get this moment, and keep repeating the steps until the new association that you recondition within your mind body becomes an automated response. Now go back through the steps to rewire the negative traits of the different archetypes that you have already identified in the exploration exercise from stage one until you have reverse associated them all. And yes, this does require you to do the work to undergoing the painstaking repetition of learning the skills. So decide today that you will commit to the process of the knack for at least twice a day, and this will speed up the mastery process. Each time that you do practice the knack, it will make more sense and it will become more effortless. If you take the time to master this technique, I guarantee you this, you will eventually have a skill that makes transformational changes in any area of your life easier and quicker to implement. You won't have to go through the laborious task of writing exercises. If you practice the knack technique, it will become a skill that you can easily do within your mind's eye at any time and for any situation. So, do the inside work. Make this a powerful technique and internalized skill. And I will see you in stage four of the resolution game, where you will learn the redirection.